The Northrop F-89 Scorpion was an early American jet-powered fighter designed from the outset as an all-weather interceptor, the first jet-powered aircraft designed as such. Though its straight wings limited its performance, it was among the first United States Air Force jet fighters with guided missiles, and notably the first combat aircraft armed with air-to-air -air nuclear weapons. Design and development The Scorpion stemmed from a United States Army Air Force's Air Technical Service Command specification for a night fighter to replace the P-61 Black Widow. The preliminary specification, sent to aircraft manufacturers on August 28, 1945 required two engines and an armament of six guns either .60 caliber machine guns or 20 mm autocannon. The revised specification was issued on November 23. It did not specify jet propulsion, but the desired maximum speed of 530 mph virtually dictated that all the submissions would be jet-powered. The aircraft was to be armed with aerial rockets stored internally and six guns split between two flexible mounts, four guns forward and two in the rear. Each mount had to be capable of 15 a degree of movement from the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. Each mount's guns were to be automatically controlled by radar. For ground attack, it had to be capable of carrying 1,000-pound bombs and to be able to carry a minimum of eight rockets externally. Bell Aircraft, Consolidated Vault E, Douglas Aircraft, Goodyear, Northrop and Curtis Wright all submitted proposals. In March 1946, the USAAF selected the Curtis Wright XP-87, adapted from their proposed XA-43 attack aircraft, and Northrop's N-24 design, one of four submitted by the company. The N-24, designed by Jack Northrop, was a slim-bodied swept-wing aircraft with a two-man pressurized cockpit and conventional landing gear. To reduce drag the two Allison J-35 turbojet engines were buried in the lower fuselage, directly behind their air intakes, and they exhausted underneath the rear fuselage. The horizontal stabilizer was mounted just above the junction of the vertical stabilizer with the fuselage and had some dihedral. A contract for two aircraft, now designated the XP-89, and a full-scale mock-up was approved on June 13 although construction of the mock-up had begun immediately after the USAAF announced that the N-24 had been selected. It was inspected on September 25 and the USAAF was not impressed. The inspectors believed that the radar operator needed to be moved forward, closer to the pilot, with both crewmen under a single canopy, the magnesium components of the wing replaced by aluminum, and the fuel stowage directly above the engines moved. Other changes had to be made as wind tunnel and other aerodynamic tests were conducted. The swept wings proved to be less satisfactory at low speeds and a thin, straight wing was selected instead. Delivery of the first prototype was scheduled for November 1947, 14 months after the inspection. The position of the horizontal stabilizer proved to be unsatisfactory as it was affected by the engine exhaust and it would be blanked out by air flow from the wing at high angles of attack. It was moved halfway up the tail, but its position flush with the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer proved to cause extra drag through turbulence and reduced the effectiveness of the elevators and rudder. Moving the horizontal stabilizer forward solved the problem. Another major change occurred when USAAF revised its specification to delete the rear gun installation on October 8. Another inspection of the mock-up was held on December 17 and the inspectors only suggested minor changes even though the fuselage fuel tanks were still above the engines. Northrop's efforts to protect the fuel tanks were considered sufficient as the only alternative was to redesign the entire aircraft. The XP-89 had a thin, straight mid-mounted wing and a crew of two, seated in tandem. The slim rear fuselage and the high-mounted horizontal stabilizer led Northrop employees calling it the Scorpione Euro a name later formally adopted by the Air Force. The intended armament of four 20mm M24 cannon in a small nose turret was not ready when the XP-89 was completed in 1948. Pending the availability of either of the two turrets under development, an interim six-gun fixed installation, with 200 rounds per gun, was designed for the underside of a nose. 
the thin wing had an aspect ratio of 9% and used a NACA 0009-64 section which was selected for its low drag at high speed and stability at low speeds. A further advantage of the straight wing was that it could accommodate heavy weights at the wingtips. The wing could not fit the circular type ailerons used in the P61, so Northrop used the decelerons designed for the unsuccessful XP79 prototype. These were clamshell style split ailerons which could be used as conventional ailerons, as dive brakes, or function as flaps as needed. All flying surfaces, the flaps and the landing gear were hydraulically powered. The thin wing dictated tall, thin, high pressure manheel tires while the low height of the fuselage required the use of dual wheels for the nose gear. The terms of the initial contract were revised and formalized on May 21, 1947 with a price increase to $5,571,111. The delivery date of the first aircraft was scheduled 14 months from signing and the second two months after that. A month before the prototype made its first flight on August 16, 1948 at Muroc Army Airfield, the USAF changed its designation for fighter aircraft from P to F. The XF-89 was fitted with 4,000-pound forces J-35A9 turbojets and proved to be seriously underpowered. Initial flights were made with conventional ailerons, decelerons not being installed until December. Several months earlier the Air Force conducted a competitive evaluation of the three existing all-weather interceptor prototypes, the XF-87, the XF-89, and the U.S. Navy's XF-3D Skiknight. The evaluators were qualified night fighter pilots, radar operators, and experienced maintenance non-commissioned officers. The pilots were not impressed with any of the aircraft and recommended procurement of an interim aircraft that resulted in the development of the Lockheed F-94 Star fire from the training version of the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star. The F-89 proved to be the fastest of the three contenders although it was in last place in cockpit arrangement and ease of maintenance. One pilot claimed that the XF-89 was the only real fighter and compared the XF-87 to a medium bomber and the XF-3D to a trainer. The full committee on evaluation overruled those evaluators who preferred the Douglas design and selected the XF-89 as it had the greatest potential for development. The Air Force subsequently cancelled the production contract for the F-87 to free up money for the Scorpion. By November 1949 the second aircraft was virtually complete, but the Air Force was concerned about the design's poor thrust-to-weight ratio and decided to implement a weight reduction program as well as upgrading the engines to the more powerful J-33A21 fitted with an afterburner. Other major changes included the replacement of the nose gun turret by the Hughes Design 6-gun nose, ANARG-33 radar, and E-1 fire control system permanent wingtip fuel tanks, and the ability to lower the complete engine for better maintenance access. The new nose added three feet to the length of the aircraft. It was redesignated YF-89A to better reflect its role as a pre-production test bed to evaluate equipment and changes planned for the F-89A production aircraft. The aircraft was essentially complete by February 1950. After repairs from a crash landing on June 27, 1949, the XF-89 was flown to March AFB to participate in the RKO movie Jet Pilot in February 1950. Shortly afterward, the aircraft crashed on February 22, killing the observer, when flutter developed in the elevator and the subsequent vibrations caused the entire tail to break off. Construction of the production models were suspended until the reasons for the accident were discovered. Engineering and wind tunnel tests revealed that the geometry of the rear fuselage and the engine exhaust created flutter-inducing turbulence that was aggravated by the high-frequency acoustic energy from the exhaust. Fixes for the problem involved the addition of a jet wake fairing at the bottom rear of the fuselage between the engines, external mass balances for the elevator, pending the design of internal mass balances, and the addition of exhaust deflectors to the fuselage to reduce the turbulence and the consequent flutter. Well before the YF-89A was complete, a $39,011,622 contract was awarded to Northrop on May 13, 1949 for 48 F-89A aircraft, 
one static test airframe and the modifications made to the YF-89A. Operational history Production was authorized in January 1949, with the first production F-89A flying in September 1950. It had a NAPG-33 radar and an armament of six 20mm T-31 cannons with 200 RPG. The swiveling nose turret was abandoned, and 300 U.S. GAL fuel tanks were permanently fitted to the wingtips. Underwing racks could carry 16 5 in aerial rockets or up to 3,200 pounds of bombs. Only 18 F-89ers were completed, which were mainly used for tests and trials before the type was upgraded to F-89B standard, with new avionics. The type entered service with the 84th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in June 1951. These had considerable problems with engines and other systems, and soon gave way to the F-89C. Despite repeated engine changes, problems persisted, compounded by the discovery of structural problems with the wings that led to the grounding of the F-89 and forced a refit of 194 -er, B, and C models. The major production model was the F-89D, which first flew October 23, 1951 and entered service in 1954. It removed the cannon in favor of a new Hughes E-6 fire control system with ANAPG-40 radar and an ANAPA-84 computer. Armament was two pods of 52 2.75 in Mighty Mouse FFAR rockets, for a total of 104. A total of 682 were built. In August 1956 a pair of F-89D interceptors were scrambled from Oxnard Air Force Base to shoot down a runaway F-6F-5K drone leading to the Battle of Palmdale incident. Proposed re-engined F-89s, designated F-89E and F-89F, were not built, nor was a proposed F-89G that would have used Hughes MA-1 fire control and GAR-1-GAR-2 Falcon air-to-air missiles like the Convair F-106 Delta Dart. The subsequent F-89H, which entered service in 1956, had an E-9 fire control system like that of the early F-102 and massive new wingtip pods each holding three Falcons and 21 FFARs, for a total of six missiles and 42 rockets. Problems with the fire control system delayed the H's entry into service, by which time its performance was notably inferior to newer supersonic interceptors, so it was phased out of USAF service by 1959. The final variant was the F-89J. This was based on the F-89D, but replaced the standard wingtip missile pod tanks with 600 gallons fuel tanks and fitted a pylon under each wing for a single MB-1 Genie nuclear rocket. The F-89J became the only aircraft to fire a live Genie as the John shot of Operation Plum Ob on July 19, 1957. There were no new build F-89JS, but 350 DS were modified to this standard. They served with the Air Defense Command, later renamed the Aerospace Defense Command, through 1959 and with ADC gained units of the Air National Guard through 1969. This version of the aircraft was extensively used within the semi-automatic ground environment air defense system. A total of 1,050 Scorpions of all variants were produced. Variants, XF-89, first prototype, powered by two 4,000-pound forces Allison J-35A9 engines. XF-89A, second prototype, fitted with more powerful dry. 6,800 pound forces with reheat, J-35A-21A engines and revised, pointed nose with cannon armament. F-89A, first production version, 8 built. Fitted with revised tailplane and 6 cannon armament. DF-89A, F-89 is converted into drone control aircraft. F-89B, second production version with upgraded avionics. 40 built. DF-89B, F-89BS converted into drone control aircraft. F-89C, third production version with more powerful engines dry, 7,400 pound forces really J-35A-21 or a 33. 164 built. YF-89D, conversion of one F-89B to test new avionics and armament of F-89D, F-89D, 
main production version which saw deletion of the 620mm cannons in favor of 104 rockets in wing pods, installation of new Hughes E6 fire control system, ANAPG-40 radar and the ANAPA-84 computer. This new system allowed the use of a lead collision attack in place of the previous lead pursuit curve technique. A total of 682 built. YF-89E, one-off prototype to test the Allison YJ-71A3 engine dry thrust, 9,500 pound forces with reheat, converted from F-89C, F-89F, proposed version with new fuselage and wings and J-71 engines, never built. F-89G, proposed version equipped with Hughes MA-1 fire control and GAR-1-GAR-2 Falcon air-to-air -air missiles, never built. YF-89H, modified F-89D to test features of F-89H. 3 converted. F-89H, version with E-9 fire control system. 6 GAR-1-GAR-2 Falcon missiles and 42 folding fin aircraft rockets 156 built. F-89J, conversion of F-89D with underwing hardpoints for 2 MB-1 Genie nuclear-armed rocket and 4 Falcon missiles, and carrying either the standard F-89D rocket fuel pod or pure fuel tanks. A total of 350 were converted from F-89DS. Operators, see also. F-89 Scorpion units of the United States Air Force, United States, United States Air Force, Air National Guard. Aircraft on display. F-89B, 49-2457 a Euro Lake View Park, Nampa, Idaho. F-89D, 52-1862, and Mendorf AFB, Anchorage, Alaska. 53 to 2463 Euro Museum of Aviation, Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia. 53 to 2494 Euro Home Base of the 158th Fighter Wing, Vermont Air National Guard, Burlington Air National Guard Base, Vermont. 53 to 2519 Euro Plains of Fame Museum, Chino, California. 53 to 2536 Euro EAA Adventure Museum, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 53 to 2610 a Euro Air Force Armament Museum, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. 53 to 2646 a Euro Friendship Park, Smithfield, Ohio. 53 to 2674 a Euro Pima Air and Space Museum, Tucson, Arizona. 53-2677 Minnesota Air National Guard Museum, Minneapolis, Minnesota. F-89H. 54-0298 a Euro DS Linear Air Park, DS Air Force Base, Texas. 54-0322, Hill Aerospace Museum, Hill Air Force Base, Utah. F-89J, 52-1856 a Euro Bangor International Airport slash Bangor Air National Guard Base, Maine. 52-1896 a Euro New England Air Museum, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. 52 to 1911 a Euro National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Dayton, Ohio. This aircraft was the last F-89 remaining in service when it was transferred to the museum from the main Air National Guard in July 1969. 52 to 1927 a Euro Castle Air Museum, Atchwater, California. 52 to 1941 a Euro Peterson Air and Space Museum. Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado. 52-1949 A Euro March Field Air Museum, March Air Reserve Base, Riverside, California. 52-2129 A Euro Air Power Park and Museum, Hampton, Virginia. 53-2547 A Euro 120th Fighter Wing of the Montana Air National Guard to Great Falls Air National Guard Base, Great Falls International Airport, Montana. It is the only airplane to have fired a live Genie rocket. 53-2453 A Euro Heritage Flight Museum, Bellingham, Washington. 53-2604 A Euro 119th Wing of the North Dakota Air National Guard, Fargo Air National Guard Base slash Hector Field, Fargo, North Dakota. Specifications Data from Scorpion with a nuclear sting, general characteristics, crew, 2, length. 
53 feet 9 1 a 2 in, wingspan, 59 feet 8 1 a 2 in, height, 17 feet 6 in, wing area, 606 feet 2, empty weight, 25,194 pounds, loaded weight, 37,190 pounds, max takeoff weight, 42,241 pounds, power plant, Tua, Allison J35A35 after burning turbojets, dry thrust, 5,440 pound forces each, thrust with afterburner, 7,200 pound forces each. Performance, maximum speed. 635 miles per hour at 10,600 feet, ferry range, 1,366 miles, service ceiling, 49,200 feet, rate of climb, 7,440 feet per minute, armament, rockets, 104 a, 2.75 in Mighty Mouse folding fin aerial rockets, 16 a, 5 in aerial rockets on underwing racks or bombs. 3,200 pounds. See also Aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era, Avro Canada CF-100, Lockheed F-94 Starfire, North American F-86D Sabre, Sud Aviation Vortal, Yakov F Yak-25, Related lists, List of military aircraft of the United States, List of fighter aircraft. References Equals Notes equals equals bibliography equals external links joe boy f89 pages first look inside the usaf f89 scorpion fighter popular science 1951 article with kuta wave f89 with original 620 mm cannon nose article at bottom of page 1957 to 1 f89 d1 flight handbook usaf series f89 d scorpion aircraft